What's up YouTube? Dale here from Zephyr and today I am bringing an update to the Red Dragon Archfiend build thanks to Joe. Now Joe looked at the build that we did with Extra Foolish Barrel to try and set up that protective negate before you hit into Nibiru territory. He looked at it and went, you know what, I know a better way of doing it. So he's provided me with this list update. He's also provided me with a combo at the end, which is a two card combo. So it's even more consistent than the previous build. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. And this is why we show you as many variants of this deck as possible, because you can constantly see it evolving, changing, getting better. And trust me, this build actually works out incredibly well, especially when we are fearful of something like a Nibiru as well. So, we start off with Triple Red Resonator. I'm not going to spend much time on these because this is pretty much all pretty straightforward and simple. The only major change is that we do now cut Crimson Resonator down to one. And the reason that we're going to cut it down from three to one is because we do not want to rely on it anywhere near as much. Yes, its effect is amazing, its effect is great, but the fact that it locks you into Dark Dragon Synchros for the entire turn, not even after you activate this effect, is very, very damaging. And we need to get a Link Monster to the board, to the graveyard, in order Order to set up our negate. So we're putting that at one. Another major change in this build is that our extenders are cut down to just triple Bone Archfiend and one Uva Loop. Just because we don't, like even with one Zalamander and one um, Wild Wind, we weren't really relying on them as heavily. And what we've kind of done is we've narrowed down the engine so that the new engine that Joe has put into the deck can thrive a little bit and get us to that protective negate without taking away from the core essence of the deck and still allowing it to do what it does um, and adding on top of that the nice little bit of negate or recursion should you need it. Again, standard on the spells, Triple Crimson Gaia, uh, Resonator Call, Foolish Burial, and then Red Zone. This can be red screen if that is your preference. If you can find the space and you want to make some other changes to the deck, then of course that can go direct in as well. For the Beast deals, this has also been cut back. So one, uh, two Lubellion, one Druid's Well, and one Magnum and the Beast. Again, you do have that option at the base minimum to add in Regained and in the Saranir. Just to set you up that draw play, if you want it, um, with this build that Joe went with, he did go for Cross Out Designator. I've kind of added back in cards that I feel is a little bit, well, more consistent for my type of play, but also quite consistent to try and get you into other parts of the engine and board breakers. But it is entirely down to you where you can flex with what you want to add to the deck. And this all comes down to what you have available to you. So the spicy engine that Joe has added back in is the rocket engine. So we've got the one rocket synchron, the one recharge art, the one tracer, and then three quick launch, and of course the one boot sector. Now annoyingly I couldn't find my third quick launch, which is why I'm only showing you two, but you definitely play three. This is obviously core to the combo at the end because the idea is that it locks you into dark monsters from the extra deck, which you don't care about because you've got everything you need to anyway. I did ask him why he went with the Rocket Synchron, and the reason for that is it's actually a really kind of cool extender that can come off the back of Quick Launch and a follow-up. So keep in mind that when it is normal summoned, you get to target a level five or higher Dark Dragon monster in your graveyard and bring it back in defense. You do negate its effects, and you do destroy it during the end phase. It also locks you out of special summoning for the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Dark Monsters, but it's one of them ones where, okay, cool, you've got a level one tuner extender if you want it, or if you do follow up with this, search of a Magnemoot or anything like that, you normal summon it, you bring one back from the graveyard, and then you can sink into an Abyss. So it does give you that nice bit, a little bit of a follow up, but if you want to keep this engine to an absolute base minimum, you can cut this down and you just focus on Tracer and Recharger. Obviously, the engine will falter depending on what parts you open up with because you don't really want Rocket Tracer to be your normal summon. If it has to be, then you can do that way as well. Then for the generic spells, now this is different. These three, um, Joe was playing Cross Out Designator. I went with Small World just because I still wanted to play the um, bridge of Santa Claus and the ability of having a board breaking Kaiju in my deck as well as a direct route to any of my starters, any of my extenders and everything else. But this can very easily be Cross Out Designator. This could then become a third Ash Blossom or a third um, Imperm or a uh, Nibiru as well. The other card I was playing is the Double Book of Eclipse. This is just my go-to board breaker. It'll either be this or Droplet. I just really like the success that this is giving me against Pearlies. But again, like I said, this can then become the third Ash Blossom. This can then become the third Imperm. And then you can make this a Nibiru if you want to as well. So that's it for the list. It's got space for the hand traps, even if they are just two of them. It is a 42 card deck. Again, I just seem to really like 42 card decks, but arguably you could cut out to make it um, a bit more preferable to your play style. But like I said, this is my particular type of build, which is why I've adapted it from Joe's list. 
but it still works for me. And then obviously Joe's this works for him. So then you'll see this and you'll be like, oh, I really do like the rocket option. I like the idea of trying to get to a savage to provide protection, but I don't like small world or I don't like cross out and I want to try it a little bit differently. For the extra, the two Ling monsters we play is the one Striker Dragon and the one Quad Boral Dragon. This is just to give you a two negates rather than one negates off the back of, uh, back of your Savage. But chances are, once you've got that one negate set up, that should be all you need, because then that will then allow you to push through for an OTK the next turn. You ideally want two so that you can negate during your turn if they have an Ibiru, and then negate during your opponent's turn if they don't, um, but entirely up to you. Then for the Synchro monsters, we'll go high to low. Uh, Red Nova Dragon, two Dispatter, um, one Bane, one Abyss, two Red Dragon Archfiends, one Scarred, one Scarlight, one Cully Belt, two Red Rising. Again, you don't want to rely on this as much because it does lock you for the entire turn. So you kind of want to be able to go, okay, let's play this a little bit differently. Um, and let's try and utilize Borrowload Savage Dragon, which is this is the last one I'm showing you because Again, like in the previous build where we played extra foolish burial, the downside was it was half your life points plus it was not allowing you to set cards. Whereas with this version, the only downside is that it takes up a little bit more space in your main deck and it doesn't give you the draw off of the extra deck or the five negate a massive attack stat boost for Savage. So it's pros and cons for both of it. It really does come down to your personal preference and play style. Um, I do quite like this. I like that it takes away the negatives of the extra foolish burial. Because again, you need to see the extra Forge Burial. The only benefit is that it's a normal spell, so it can be set with or added by Frost. But then again, um, it's also paying half your life points. You can't set Red Rain, you can't set Red Screen. It does make it a little bit difficult. So pros and cons to it all. I'm now going to reset the board state and I'll show you the two card combo that utilizes these cards so you can see exactly how you get there as easily as possible. So back in a sec. Starting off the combo, we go with Quick Launch and of course Bone Archfiend. Two specific cards in a deck, but then you do have more ways to get to Bone Archfiend through something like Small World. And if you wanted to, you could arguably put in Pot of Prosperity. But the idea is you're going to be able to activate your Quick Launch, you're going to special summon out your Rocket Tracer. You then link your Rocket Tracer off and go into your Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon's effect will then trigger in order to search out Boot Sector Launch. You then activate the boot sector launch while also activating the striker dragon's effect to target the rocket tracer in the graveyard, destroying the striker and adding the rocket back to the hand. You now use boot sector launch in order to special summon the rocket from the hand, then use tracer's effect to destroy the boot sector and special summon recharger from the deck. Then what you do here is you link both of these together and you go into your quad borrow. Then use Quad Borrow's effect. So you get to discard a card, then target one face-up monster on the field. This card itself. It locks you into special summoning linked to or lowest for the rest of the turn, but that doesn't matter. Then what you do is if this card was destroyed and um, if the card that was destroyed that was targeted is a link monster, you get to bring back monsters from the graveyard up to its link rating. So you're going to discard the Bone Archfiend and you're going to summon back your Rocket Recharger and your Tracer. Now the idea behind going into Quad Barrel, not only will it give you two negates, but it also puts um, an extra monster on the board that can be sent through, or an extra card on the board that Bone Archfiend can send. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna Synchro Summon these two together and you're gonna go into your Borrow Load Savage Dragon. You're gonna use the effect of that, and that is going to allow you to add back your Quad Barrel. This is now gonna put two tokens or two counters on top of Borrow Load Savage, so it now has two negates. Now one little bit of tech is that you can now use Bone Archfiend to send the Quad Borrow from the field to the graveyard. So Savage Dragon does not lose its negates because it doesn't say anywhere that the equipped monster needs to remain. Then all you need to do is you need to be able to send one monster um, from the one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard to summon out the Bone Archfiend which is very easily done. When you do that, use Bone Archfiend's effect to send the Vision Resonator from deck to the graveyard, triggering Vision Resonator's effect to add you the Crimson Gaia and making Bone Archfiend a level five. Activate Crimson Gaia, search out your Soul Resonator. Normal summon the Soul Resonator. I know, we haven't even used our normal summon yet. Use the effect of Soul Resonator to add the Synchron Resonator. And then you're gonna Synchro Summon for a level eight using the level five Bone Archfiend and of course your um, Soul Resonator to make you your Scarred Dragon Archfiend. In doing so, what you can now do is Special Summon down the Synchron Resonator and then Synchro these two together to get you a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. You'll then use the effect of Scarred and the effect of Synchron Resonator in the graveyard. Synchron Resonator will allow you to add Vision Resonator back to your hand, while your Scarred will allow you to summon out your Red Dragon Archfiend. 
You can then special summon down at your Vision Resonator, and then you get to Synchro Summon your Red Dragon Archfiend and your Synchron Resonator together for your Bestial Dispatter. Now the only thing that is currently missing is banishing one card from your graveyard in order to make sure that your Bestial Dispatter is fully live. Depending on whatever extra um, card you have in your hand will allow you to do that as well. So keep in mind, if you open up Crimson Gaia, the Vision Reson um, the Vision Synchron Com uh, like part of it, is less important. You've got direct access to your um, Soul Resonator. Everything can be adapted. The idea is that you just start off with two cards. You're still gonna have three more cards in your starting hand as well to play with. And if any of those can help lead you to Uverloop, then you're gonna be able to set up your Banish as well. But the idea is you're able to get a Savage Dragon with a nice bit of Omni Negate, so you don't need to worry about even ease and Lightning Storms anymore. Um, and then it also gives you the ability of a Negate from Abyss, and eventually you'll get to the point where you can get to a Negate off the back of the Dispatter or a pop of the Dispatter as well. If you don't want to go into this battle, you can very easily go into something like Bane and Revive a card from the graveyard, and literally you can switch this entire combo to be more aggressive, and again, exactly like that, rather than going into Dispatter, then you can very easily go into Bane, and you push that aggression on the board that little bit further, or you just go into your Red Dragon Archfiend, attack, shift everything to defense, blow it all up, and then bring the Scarred back. So you're still in a very good position, and it's great that this combo can be done going first or second. Anyway, that is it for the profile, that is it for the combo. I hope it's given you a nice little update. Um, obviously, I wasn't able to show a fully conclusive combo in the previous profile, but now with Joe's interaction and introducing the rocket cards, I can do that for you as well. So I thought it was really kind of cool. This maintains its negate, which is really something that I never really fully considered. Like, it's kind of common knowledge in the sense that you would never consider to send the equip monster, but the fact that it maintains its negates is absolutely insane, which is what makes this play work. There are ways, depending on what else you have in the hand, for rather than having to go through to our fist summon, you can actually summon down Borrowload Savage Dragon and then have it equipped with your Striker Dragon, still doing the same thing, um, but then you would need an additional card in the hand in order to send or set up your Bone Arch Fiend, basically. Anyway, that's it for the combo, that's it for the profile. Any questions, comments down below, more than happy to answer them. Shout out to Joe again for this amazing update to the deck. I think it's great to see how this deck has evolved from the structure deck version um, to high value versions to more budget versions, supies, um, B steals, you name it. The deck's really, really cool, really, really adaptive, um, and I can't wait to see how it keeps going and keeps ticking in order to kind of find its weaknesses and then how we can protect from those as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.